Hi, I'm Ems, aka I'm Dark on Wings. So this video is going to be a review and a look at Darkstar Molten Metal paints. Darkstar specialise in acrylic based metallic paints with the majority of the range being based around that with a few washes as well. I own hundreds of different paints of different brands and have been painting for two decades. And I do find that a lot of true metallic paints from certain ranges just suck. So Molten Metals have definitely filled a niche within a niche when it comes to miniature painting. So there are a lot of different colours within this range filling different needs. So you have your standard sort of silvers and golds which are, pack a lot of punch. And then you have some more verdigris type of paints for more weathered looks. And then you do have some brighter colours for highlights as well. Besides the main range they do have this gemstone range as well which are very colourful metallics. One of the things I really like about this range is you can break it down into a base colour, a layer and a highlight, sort of similar to how Citadel do their paints. You don't necessarily have to follow this pattern, you could add some silver paints and add some darker other paints to create some shadows, but I just think it's neat and handy to have. Also they have this range of watches which are tailored towards metallics but you could probably use on any acrylic paints. I didn't want to use just the entire range during this video, I think it would get a bit repetitive so I just wanted to try and pick out some choice colours. Inside the paint bottles themselves they do have a little ball bearing so it mixes properly but I've given it a good shake as well. So I'm just trying this paint with a little bit of water added to get a better flow and coverage and this is going straight over that black primer. So I was super impressed by the coverage of this paint even after just one coat. Metallic paints don't tend to be highly pigmented. But this was really nice, it covered the model really well and wasn't splotchy at all. So I'm using the graphite paint here, which is a brighter silver colour. I'd already put a base layer of steel down over some parts of the model, however you couldn't see them too well on the camera with being quite dark paint. So I'm going back over those steel painted areas and highlighting them. And I think, again, this is a great paint stands out really well and has a great coverage and finish to it. I forgot to mention at the beginning as well that they do a metallic thinner which is ideal for if you're using these paints through an airbrush or if you want to thin them down instead of using water. To my discovery the graphite paint has this slightly blue tinge to it which I think is great because a lot of reflections tend to have blues in them because of the sky. So I wanted to try out the washes, so I went with this Victorian Palo. Washing this over the top of the gold parts of the armour. So this paint has a reddish brown tinge to it. It's almost like a deep flesh wash tone, which is usually what I recommend when it comes to gold armour, like a Reichland flesh wash or a Gilman's contrast paint thin dough. That's usually what I recommend in my videos. I love the consistency of this wash. It's thin but still covers very well. I find with a lot of washes, they tend to stain the model and you have to rework what you've done previously. Obviously I'm not saying don't use the washes you already have, but these are a nice bonus to try out and I think if you're looking for some new washes, these are really nice. So I wanted to try and add some highlights to these colours to see what the brighter tones were like, so I'm going to be dry brushing these on. I really like using makeup brushes when it comes to dry brushing. They tend to be softer and leave a much less chalky finish. If you want a smoother, less chalky finish when it comes to dry brushing, it's good to have your brush a little bit moist. This doesn't matter so much when it comes to terrain, but when you want a smoother finish from your models, it's a good idea to get a sponge that's damp and then have your brush slightly moist. You can buy this as well as using the sponge called a sponge dampening pad. 
I know companies like Artis Opus sell these and they're very expensive, but you can just get your own a much cheaper. So I'm just slightly moistening this on the sponge. I grabbed braid gold and fine gold to try these out. So I loaded that brush up with paint after it's slightly moistened and I'm just wiping away the excess on a piece of paper. I'm brushing this over the top of the model, mainly going for the raised areas, which it naturally catches. The secret with dry brushing is not to go too over the top, you still want to see some of those previous layers to create some contrast. So I really like the braid gold, I thought that added some more highlights and now we're going to go even brighter with that pale gold. Another colour I was super impressed by, I really wanted to show you, is the standard copper. I dry brushed this copper over a layer of the aged copper. As I said at the beginning of the video, I love that there are darker tones, mid-tones and then lighter tones for each colour, which makes it a lot easier to paint with. I also wanted to show you some of the gemstone colours during this video, and I was really impressed by some of them. So here are the ones I used on this Tyranid. I wasn't as impressed with the ruby and the jade colours over the black primer. I don't think they covered very well. However, I did reuse them again over a white primed model and I think they looked a lot better than over a black primer. So if you're looking at the gemstone colours, I think some of them would look better over white rather than black. So in conclusion, I think I'm just really impressed by this range. Here are the colours I used so far, which I was really impressed by and I would recommend starting off with if you're looking at this brand. The coverage of them is really great and they pop so well on your models. Obviously I didn't want to use every single paint in this video, but I'll try and use them in future ones and I will put the list of the ones I liked in the description below. So here are a few of the models I painted up using this metallic range. I was super impressed by these paints, I highly recommend them. Thanks for watching, as always remember to enjoy your hobbies for yourself, respect that people enjoy them in their own ways, and at the end of the day they're just war dollies. I'll see you in the next one.